Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on Legends of Tomorrow, and I think this might be my first video on Season 5. I can't even remember because obviously I wasn't reviewing this season for a couple of reasons I mentioned. But obviously we're going to be talking about the finale and just the ending of this season in general, but if you've not watched the episode, spoiler alert, and we'll be talking about everything, but of course if you, you, know, you have watched the episode, let me know your various thoughts on this season, not just the finale, leave it a, you know, leave it a you know, a short review on the finale and then maybe your whole thoughts on the season as a whole in the comment section down below. Any theories you have going to next season as well. I'm intrigued to see what you guys have to say, your various opinions. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it. it. Takes two seconds and helps during this time. So pretty much this season has been, I think the season, funnily enough, and if, you, if someone told me this heading into it, I'd go, you're lying. Stop lying to me, otherwise I will slap you. This season has been the best season in regards to adapting something from Crisis or post-Crisis and using it throughout the season as we had the Loom um, the loom of Fate, which pretty, pretty much all the pieces of it were separated throughout the multiverse and that pretty much you couldn't get to them. But because of Crisis happening and everything coming together to form Earth Prime from what was already there before, all of it is on the same Earth now, which I thought was actually a really interesting concept. The only thing that's an issue with it is that it pretty much just adapts what the Spear of Destiny was, how the Spear of Destiny was like cracked up into a couple of pieces, spread throughout time, whether it was the future or the past. It's the same thing with a couple of different elements where you need the Sisters or the Fates to control it. And that's what we've seen coming up into this season towards the end and just building up to them, you know, gaining full control um, and everything like that. If the Spear of Destiny wasn't a thing, we didn't have that in season two, this would be a really good, be like, wow, that's really creative. But we've really had it already and this episode in general was almost like that episode in season two where the legion of doom makes their own world i think it was called doom world it's pretty much that um so it wasn't extremely creative but it was still a fun episode but anyway just before this we had the original so last episode we had the original zari return physically like before she was in other episodes but she actually appears now and she is able to walk into reality now so we have two zaris the one from this new timeline from the future who's like the social media person and the og one we met back in season two was it Did we, is there season two i think it was season two as well um or was it season three whenever we met zari yeah that, <laughs> whenever we met zari that version and personally i do like the og version but i don't mind this future one i didn't really like her at first but then as the season went on, you got to connect with her more. I was pretty sweet with her, so I was fine. But pretty much we go into this episode and it's, as I said, it's like that season two episode called Doom World. We may as well call this Loom World. That's probably the best thing to call it. So we have the Loom Temple of the Fates and we have the, the legends trying to like infiltrate it. And we also have, they're split off, which I thought was actually interesting. And, and there's one Zari per group. So I thought that was smart for them to split that. So we have one group infiltrating to pretty much, to pretty much destroy the Loom of Fate. And another group looking for the Wave Rider so they can, you know, get out of there. The Wave Rider was in the dump, which I was like, okay, why is it there? But then we see that there's all, all the other good stuff, pretty much. Like massage chairs and appliances and stuff. Like all the good stuff's in the dump for some reason. So... Are they implying the Wave Rider is amazing? I guess it's pretty cool. It can travel through time. Now, one thing with the Wave Rider I thought was actually fairly interesting because you actually get to see Nate use his powers is the smart use of Nate using his abilities where he turns to steel and he, he helps jumpstart the Wave Rider. Um, yeah, that's been one issue with uh, uh, it's going to be called Supernatural for some reason. Uh, Legends is it isn't really a superhero show anymore. It's just a time travel show where there is characters from some of the other shows there now. And then obviously there is some characters that we introduced through this show. I would prefer if it went more to its superhero elements, like we had in season two and uh, two and three, especially. I'm okay with what it is now, but I would prefer if it was more superhero-esque and just had more, I guess, dip their toe into the comics more. Look, I think it's it's gone this way. I don't, you can, I don't think they're ever going to really bring it back. I think they've chosen which direction they want to go. So I think if you keep bringing it up and complaining, it's sort of... Honestly, you're wasting your energy to be completely honest. So there's no point really focusing on it too much. But where they go now, I'm happy with, uh, even though I would prefer another way. Now we had that, um, that scene with uh, Astra and Constantine and Astra was like almost getting through to the limit of fate, like that, the whole thing with her mother and stuff. And I was thinking, hold on, are they going to destroy this? And this is going to be like over really early. And I was like, no, hold on. It's too early in the episode for this to happen. But it was sick to see... Um, Atropos, I think that's the best way to say her name. I think that's how you say it. Uh, get owned by the loom when like uh, Sarah just like uh, beats her and then Berard comes in and goes foot with the wind and just smacks her into the loom. She just gets consumed by it. Thought that was really cool. That was probably my favorite sequence in regards to like visually just because the loom itself looked really cool. Like the one I first saw in the season, I was like, 
man, that actually looks pretty sick. Like, it actually, is, it's much cooler looking than the Spirit of Destiny, because they definitely went out making that look cool. And I thought the visual effects in this episode were fairly good for a couple of different things, so I was actually sort of impressed. But in doing this, we actually have Sarah getting her eyesight back, which I thought, okay, there we go, because um, in the promo, she was, like, blind, then didn't, wasn't blind in, like, various different shots in the promo trailer and the images, and I was like, well, what happens there? And, well, that explains it. We do actually end up in another reality, which, uh, as I said, it was too early in the episode for everything to be done, so something else is happening. So we end up in another reality where there's this, like, a smartwatch, that's what it was, which pretty much everyone has by the looks of it, which is connected to the loom, and obviously this is not good, or at least we're led to believe it's connected to the loom. And this is obviously not good because it's pretty much, you know, telling people exactly what to do. It's a bit of a control mechanism. But this does lead us to probably the, the funnier areas or the funniest area in this episode. And that's the, just the history museum. It's not, you know, the Star City historical factual area of the city. It's just called the history museum. Where we get to see uh, a couple of things. But the main thing we get to see at first, at least, is the Hall of Bad Ideas. So we see like the shake weight. <laughs> so that's not the funniest scene with the shake weight later. But we see the shake, like a shake weight. Uh, cigarettes, I think like pogo, was it pogo sticks or the spring shoes, something like that. Glitter. What's with glitter? Glitter's okay. Actually, glitter's a bit messy, so maybe it is a bad idea. And there's much more, but the funniest thing in here was definitely the thong song. With the lyrics there, the lyrics are, are excerpt, um, there's like an excerpt of the lyrics, lyrics on like a board. And we even have the guy who sang it, the artist Cisco is actually there. Hilarious. Like, no show would do that but, but Legends, like what the hell. But one of the more, I guess, deep and more serious things about this episode, because Legends can be stupid, but then it can be very, very serious and emotional at the same time. Um, sometimes it leans too heavily in the stupidness or the stupidity, that's probably the best way to call it. But this episode had a good mix. We had Barard um, having visions of the timeline of the original Zari or from the original Zari where he is killed by the Argus agent. So when we met Zari initially, we knew that story. And we can see that the original timeline is catching up to him with the wound from it showing up again. So we see like the bullet hole and he's just having like chest pains throughout the episode. So that I think that was a good moment. We'll get to where it leads later on. Now the Hall of Villains was another interesting place where they're ranked. And I was thinking, okay, they had, um, who was number 14? I can't remember who number 14 was. It was it Rasputin or something like that. I think it was number 14. But the legends are number two, which I thought, okay, I guess in this timeline, they would be the big villains. And Charlie is number one because of what she did. Now we find that the Lachesis actually rebuilt the loom, even without Atropos, but that's actually not the case. That's what we were told with us finding out that the loom was actually destroyed. When they destroyed it, it was actually gone. And that Gideon is the replacement to fool and control people. So there is actually no like loom going on. It's just Gideon sending out things and people going, okay, we'll believe it. But I did like Ash just standing out to the cases in that room. Um, I was sort of like hot and cold. Actually, I was more cold on Astra. I was like, uh, I'm not really in with this character, but I think, she, you know, you warm up to her throughout the season. Still don't think she was amazing, but um, you warm up to her more throughout the season. But Lachesis does send the encores onto the Legends. And this is when it starts. I was like, okay, they got the thong song there. They're going to even do anything with it. Nate threatened to play it earlier. And as they're walking past, he couldn't help himself. He activates thong song. I never thought I'd be saying activates thong song in a video about a comic book show. What the hell? Anyway, he activates thong song in the fight scene. That's the background music. What the hell? Like, the fight scene itself was okay, but just thong song in the background? Like, if anyone accidentally finds that on YouTube and, like, they recommend it, they're gonna be like, what? Who was... What were they smoking when they made this? Now, one thing I did like was it was good to see them in their suits, even though... Yeah, it was good, good, good to see them in their suits for once. They're hardly in them. But the Legends do need hell weapons to kill the Encores. That's been a thing throughout, throughout the season. You just can't grab a butter knife and j jab it into, you know... Stalin's eye. You need a you need a hell weapon to kill an encore. Other if they didn't get them, other they would have been like fighting forever. So lucky they got them. But Berard's uh, wound gets the final stage. Like he's about to die. Pretty much he's to the point where the original timelines almost merged. So he's about to die as the two timelines that Zari was a part of are now like fighting for control. So OG Zari has to go back into the totem in order to, in order to save him. And this was actually a pretty sad farewell for Nate and Zari. It's sort of similar to last season. Like I don't think many people were really on board with Nate and Zari like a lot of last season but right towards the end he cared for them and then the, the, like the last scene there was sort of sad and it was the same here even though they didn't spend too much time with each other um so yeah i thought the farewell with um zari was really good as i said i do prefer that og version of zari but i've warmed up more to the other uh, tech social media version once again i don't think this doesn't get close to thong song because thong song is just i don't think you go past thong song 
I've said thong song way too many times in this video, but we have a punk version of the theme song or the, the jingle to Mr. Parker's cul-de-sac. What? I was, it was playing and I was like, it was like, ends in a circle. I'm like, wait, no, this isn't. Uh, and then I was like, oh my God, it actually is the Mr. Parker's cul-de-sac thing. I know Legends has the memes within the memes within the show, but that's next level because you're going, what the hell? Anyway. Punk version of that song, interesting song choice by Charlie and The Smell, but Charlie actually does decide to stay back with, you know, where she was originally from, I guess, which I think a lot of us could have seen coming throughout the last few episodes and just maybe the season in general, but even just the finale in general as well. It felt like her being such a big focus, she was eventually probably just going to go. Um, so I, this wasn't too much of a shock, but I wouldn't be surprised if we met her again in like an episode or two, or Amaya maybe comes back. I have to wait and see. I don't know if that's the it for Maisie Richardson Sellers on the show. I'd assume she's coming back though. I have to wait and see. But the cliffhanger for the season was sort of annoying because they already released the synopsis for next season, which spoiled this. So I wish that synopsis was held off or they just, this bit wasn't even in the synopsis uh, for next season. But Sarah was abducted by aliens. So they already confirmed that aliens were the villains for next season. So this cliffhanger was sort of ruined by that. So that's a bit annoying and like, Obviously, it was just putting like, um, what do you call it? like the, the titles of like various articles and stuff. So, so like you had to read read the synopsis to find out. It was if you were just on Twitter, you would have had that spoiled for you. So that was a bit annoying. But we see Sarah's updated. Uh, 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 I can't even speak. Abducted by aliens. I know where that's going next season. That sounds expensive. But unless they just build a set and they just do a lot of alien stuff there. Um, but I wonder if it's going to be like a comic book alien group. Um, don't think it'll be the Dominators, but it'll be interesting to see who they choose. But then again, as I said earlier in the video, Legends sort of goes off the comic book stuff. So maybe it might just be like random aliens and they can choose what they want to do with them. And it wouldn't surprise me if they shapeshift the aliens. So then they don't have to have people in makeup or CGI all the time. So it'll be interesting. It's going to be a long wait as well. You're going to be waiting like pretty much a year, I think, to get the next season of Legends, which is crazy to say. But overall, it was actually... I think this might have been my favorite finale for a DC TV show in regards to the Arrowverse this season. It was just so stupid, but also really good at the same time, which is usually good with Legends. It can just balance that stupidity and also just the seriousness and just the, the well-done storytelling. I wouldn't say it was well, like crazy good storytelling, but just enjoyable stuff. I'm just trying to think, it might, I think it might be my favorite just because a lot of the other ones didn't get to finish. That's the main thing as well. This actually got to finish its proper season. I might put it up there. It might be number one. I, I might have to rewatch it again just to get another good feel of it, but I think it might be up there. In regards to my overall thoughts of the season, I think this season started off really rough. Um, season four, I was really not a fan um, outside of a handful of episodes, but I think this season started off in that nature. And that's, that's why I was sort of like, I went off the videos. I watched the first episode. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm not going to start this if I know I'm not going to end it or at least be consistent with it and go through with it. But it really picked up, I would say, around mid-season. Like, funnily enough, like, it probably picked up really well around the time Ray left the show. And it's not because Ray left the show. That's just a good point for me to reference. It was around the time he left the show. Um, so it really picked up in that last half, even though there was like an episode there which I didn't like too much. But overall, I think it had a fairly solid season and it redeemed itself about halfway through and it was better than last season. But um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like on it and show support, let me know in the comments section down below. What was your favorite part of the finale? What did you think of Thong Song? What did you think of this season as a whole, as well as the finale and just as it's just as by itself, I guess you could say. Let me know all those various thoughts, opinions, and anything like that in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you later. Goodbye.